We're about to tackle a major upgrade to our electrical system and wanted to give you an overview of what's coming. Our current batteries are about seven years old and they've gotten to the point where it's definitely time to replace them. Our RV originally came with a set of four flooded lead acid household batteries. And seven years ago, when we replaced them, we upgraded to AGMs. But about the same time, we also upgraded our refrigerator from a standard RV refrigerator to a residential fridge. And that upgrade resulted in having a bigger power demand than what we had before. These four AGMs have always been acceptable, but have never been optimal when it came to running our residential refrigerator. Had it come from the factory with a fridge like that, it would have come with six or even eight batteries instead of just four. So in order to increase the capacity of our battery bank, lithium is our best option. Now there's a fair amount of confusion when it comes to the various lithium chemistries that are available. And unfortunately, because there have been situations with smartphones, laptops, and even hoverboards having explosions or fire issues, lots of people are concerned that lithium batteries for their RV could be a problem. But there's a lot of various chemistries that are used for lithium batteries, and while they're all used the same term of lithium, they're not all created equal. The batteries that are used in smartphones and laptops are typically a lithium cobalt formulation that has a problem with thermal runaway, and that's why you've read those reports and seen the news. But the batteries that are used for automotive applications and RVs use a totally different chemistry. It's lithium iron phosphate, often abbreviated LIFEPO. And that formula doesn't have the issue with thermal runaway, so it's safe to use. Whenever we mention lithium in this video or others, we'll always be referring to that lithium iron phosphate formulation because it's extremely stable and extremely safe. Lithium batteries are a popular upgrade for RVs right now, so you may have seen other people online with videos or blogs documenting their experiences with the process. You may have noticed in their installations that they often simultaneously upgrade their solar array when they've increased their battery bank with a lithium battery. And at the same time, they often move their lithium batteries inside. And that's because standard RV trays for batteries are often outside and vented to the air. The flooded lead acid batteries need to be vented because of the gases that can escape from them during charging. But lithium batteries have one limitation that's important here. They cannot be charged if the battery is at or below freezing. So everyone moves their batteries inside to a temperature controlled compartment to ensure that they can charge them under all circumstances. So there are two things that we're going to be doing different with our install. The first is that we're going to be starting with our batteries only. We want to change one variable at a time. We've had the same three solar panels with 375 watts of output the entire time we've owned this RV. So we had six years of experiencing that with flooded lead acid batteries and a standard RV refrigerator, followed by seven years with the current AGM batteries with our residential refrigerator. So changing just the one component, the batteries from AGM to lithium, we'll get a feel for how much the battery itself affects our performance and ability to function when we're off the grid. And we'll be following with a solar upgrade at some point afterward when we've had time to experience the lithium battery by itself. The second thing is that we'll be installing our lithium in the same outdoor compartment that our current batteries are in, which means it could be subject to freezing temperatures. Now you're probably wondering how we can do that when we just said that lithium batteries can't be charged when the temperatures drop below freezing. We'll be using a new Xantrex E-Gen lithium battery, and it's the first lithium battery of its kind that we've seen that can handle sub-freezing temperatures. Now it's not being accomplished with a new battery chemistry, it's the same proven and safe lithium iron phosphate formulation that's currently popular in use for RV batteries. Now what they've done is install a thermal blanket. The battery itself actually senses its own temperature and turns the blanket on when needed in order to heat itself up so it can be charged when the outside temperature is too cold. This new battery makes it so that we're going to be able to install our lithium in the same tray we're using right now and not have to move the batteries indoors and perform a whole lot of extra rewiring. This is going to be the first install of this new battery. And so we're not going to be doing the installation ourselves. It's going to be being professionally installed with the coordination of Xantrex engineers and technicians to make sure that it's integrated properly with all of our existing systems. At the same time we're upgrading our house batteries to lithium, 
we're also going to be upgrading our chassis batteries from maintenance-free flooded lead-acid batteries to AGM. Now, when people hear AGM batteries, they typically think of house batteries, not starting batteries. And the reason that we're going with AGMs for our chassis batteries is because we wanted to upgrade the tech on our chassis batteries as much as we're upgrading the tech on our house batteries. It's normally not possible because of the cold cranking amp requirements of diesel engines. We contacted Cummins to find out what the minimum requirements were, and for our ISL engine, we need two 950 cold cranking amp batteries in order to start. Now, most AGMs don't offer that kind of capacity, but Full River AGMs, we've found, have multiple models that can not only meet that need, but exceed it. And we're gonna be replacing our chassis batteries with two Full River 1100 cold cranking amp batteries. The last thing we need to discuss on this side of the RV is actually the first thing we're going to tackle as part of the project, and that's the battery tray. The new Xantrex E-Gen lithium battery, while very compact, needs about three inches more space than we have in our current tray. So we're going to need to extend the tray and use the extra six inches of space we have available in the compartment in order to make room for it. So the first video in the series is going to cover all of that, taking our existing batteries out so that we can remove the tray to have it cut, extended, and welded, and then put back in place so it's ready to receive our new Xantrex and Full River battery bank. Now, Peter's waiting on the other side of the RV to tell you about the parts of the project that will take place in our electrical compartment. Peter? Thank you, John. Now, I'm over here by our electrical compartment, and the first part of the project that'll happen over here has to do with our Hughes Autoformer, which is sitting here inside the compartment. Now, if you've seen our past video or videos about that, you know that we like to keep it inside for a few reasons. One is, it's weather resistant, but not weatherproof. So keeping it in here keeps it dry. The second is that we want to keep it secure and don't want to worry about someone walking off with a valuable piece of equipment. And the third has to do with a lot of misunderstandings about autoformers. People think that when you have one, you're stealing power somehow, especially if it's a hot day in the park and everyone's running their air conditioner and they're having problems due to low power they see you have an autoformer and they think you're stealing their power. Well, autoformers don't work that way at all. But just to avoid the discussion and for security and safety purposes, we just keep it in here. Now, when we installed it here, we had to make a compromise. You can see we have an electric cord reel that feeds in from the top. This is a Glendinning cord reel, which has been our original equipment since we first purchased the RV 13 years ago. And the way it works is it reels the cable in and coils it up in this black ABS plastic bin. The problem is that there isn't enough room in this compartment for the autoformer to fit. So our compromise has been to leave it sitting inside the cord bin here. The trouble with that is, as a result, we haven't actually been able to use our beautiful Glendinning cord reel since we got our autoformer. Now, we value the autoformer a lot, and it was worth that compromise, but it's basically meant that our cord reel has sat idle, and we've been using an extension cord since then. So that's one of the things we want to correct with this project, is to make it so that we can start using a power cord reel again, because our rig came with one, and we want to continue being able to do that again. The other reason we're going to make a change over here is because we not only need room for our autoformer, but there will be new equipment being installed over here as part of our lithium battery upgrade leading into our future solar upgrade that John told you about. So our goal here is to free up space on the floor of this compartment by removing this bin because it uses so much space it's kind of empty inside. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to remove our cord reel all together. The bin, the unit itself, take it out and replace it with a different type of cord reel that uses less space. And we're going to get a couple of advantages from that. First off, obviously the floor will be completely empty because this cord reel is going to hang from the ceiling like this one does, but it will keep the cord completely up on the reel instead of piling it up down below. Now we've been using as I mentioned, this Glendinning cord reel with no problem. It served us well for 13 years. We're going to stick with Glendinning because not only has it been a great product for us, 
but Numar uses glendinning reels in their brand new high-end rigs. So all the most expensive, highest-end Numars come with glendinning reels to this day. So it's a product we have faith in, we've had good experience with, and we're simply going to switch to a different model. The other advantage we're going to get, besides freeing up all that floor space, is we're going to have a longer cord. Our electrical compartment is here in the middle of our rig, kind of halfway back. The disadvantage of having that is that some sites have their power pedestals all the way behind the RV, some pretty far back. And when we run into that situation, this 35 feet of cord sometimes isn't long enough to reach. The new cord on the new Glendinning reel we'll be installing is 50 feet long, giving us an extra 15 feet of cord length that we've never had before. We're about to start on this multi-step project and as John mentioned, the very first thing will be to remove and enlarge the battery tray. We'll have videos for you about the actual process of making these upgrades, but also over the upcoming months and year, we'll tell you about living with the changes we've made, the pros and cons of what we've done, what it's really like to live with these modifications. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please click the link down below and make sure you turn on channel notifications so you'll be notified each time we come out with a new video. Also, if you haven't already seen what we're doing over on Patreon, we hope you'll come and check that out. Besides supporting these regular YouTube videos, all of our patrons get special content, live Q&As, private videos and behind the scenes, and some of them even get their names listed in the credits of these videos. Those are the names you see going by right now. People whose support makes it possible for us to continue doing all we're doing to help our fellow RVers. We hope you'll come check it out and maybe you'll join us there too. As always, safe travels and thanks for watching.